Hi guys, my name is Bethany Atazada. I'm the author of Evelyn's Number, and now, as of May 29th, The Confident Corgi. Ah, yay! Like I said in my last video, I learned a lot about writing a children's book and creating it and publishing it. So I am breaking that up into a bunch of different videos, one each day during the release week of The Confident Corgi. Today we're focusing just on the story itself. How do you come up with an idea? How do you know if it's the right idea? How do you actually write it well and figure out what age group that you're gearing it towards? You also have to consider if it's going to rhyme or not, if it should be past or present tense, if it's going to be first person or third person. So let's start with the basics. What do you need to figure out when you're trying to come up with your story? I would say number one is to figure out your age range. Like what age group are you gearing your book towards? Publishers generally do assign age groups for readers and if you publish on a print-on-demand company such as CreateSpace, they're also going to ask you what age group you're targeting. So you need to know. I found this cool photo online and I thought I'd include it here for you guys where it talks about the different age ranges. Okay, so everything on this chart is what publishers specifically have assigned as age groups for readers. Um, you have board books first, which are newborns to three years old. Then you have picture books ages three to eight. After that are coloring and activity books, which are also ages three to eight, but they're a little different. Novelty books um, is three and up, depending on the content. Then you have your early level readers. So ages five through nine are different levels of early readers. Then you have the very first chapter books, which are typically ages six to nine or seven to 10. After that, you'll have middle grade ages eight to 12. And after that is young adult, which is ages 12 and up. Here's another really cool chart that I found that gives you more of an idea of not just the age ranges, but also the word count that typically goes along with the book and the number of pages and whether or not that book would be illustrated. So I have been writing young adult books ages 12 and up, but I wanted to go into the category of picture books ages 3 to 8. This is going to massively affect everything else that you choose to do. Your writing, your artwork, your just everything, your whole story is going to change depending on who you are targeting. If you have kids of your own or your friends have kids, you can even run your story by them to see what is really working for their age. The second thing you should figure out is your characters. Do you want to use people or animals or fruit and vegetables or inanimate objects or what else? Like you name it, be creative. The sky is the limit here. Kids love creative things. The only thing I'd suggest is to make sure that it is still relatable to kids and appropriate for children. Number three is to choose your location. So not every book has a really obvious location, some do, but even if it doesn't end up playing a really major role, you still kind of want to know, at least in your mind, where this is taking place. Number four, you should choose your tense. So what I mean by this is, are you going to write your book in past tense or present? Past tense is what we kind of all naturally lean towards most of the time when we tell stories, and then present tense is more engaging and exciting. Kids really like that it's in the moment. It can make them feel a little bit more into the story, but there's no right or wrong way. In fact, when I checked out a test group of books from the library of all different kinds, popular and ones that I'd never heard of before, I found that most of these are actually in past tense. For an example of past tense, this is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George and the man with the yellow hat were visiting the aquarium. Then you've got present tense. We see animals all around in the sky and on the ground. We see a dog, we see a cat, we see a fish, then a bat. So things are happening in the moment. So you'll see it's in the verbs. That's your past and present. I chose to write the Corgi book in past tense because that's what came naturally to me. And when I rewrote it in present, it didn't feel like the same story and I didn't enjoy it as much. So quick tip is write it whichever way you want, but then if you want to try writing it in the other tense, children's books are short. It's not gonna take you that long to write it in the opposite and then see which one that you like better. Again, there's no right or wrong way, but whatever you do choose to do, make sure that you stick with it. Don't be changing tenses throughout the story. That's the only thing that's a no-no. <laughs> Number five is to choose your point of view. Do you wanna write your story in first person, like I did this and I did that, or do you wanna write it in third person? 
Penny did this, Penny did that. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Some of the questions that could help you decide if you should do it in first person or third person is, is the main character the central focus on every page? Is everything happening to them? Is it helpful to see events through their eyes? If yes, then you could do first person. If not, then third person might give you more flexibility to kind of zoom out and let the kids see more of the world. Again, there's no right or wrong way, but do make sure that once you choose, you stick with it. You don't want to be switching which point of view you are halfway through the book. Okay, number six, let's take a look at your story as a whole. What makes a good story? I think the first thing that makes a good story is having a character arc. So your character is growing from beginning to end. They've gone through an experience and they've changed in some way and grown. This is just as true with young adult and adult books as it is with children's books, but it's something that um, some children's books might leave out because they don't think it's important. If you do like a day in the life, you know, they brush their teeth and then they brush their hair and then they sat in a chair. It's not an exciting story. Kids are going to be frustrated with that and parents are too. So you need to have a full story with a character arc where they've learned and grown through the story. On that same topic, your story should have a clear beginning, middle, and end. So a good way to figure this out is to see if you can sum up your story in three sentences. The beginning, describing the beginning, describing the middle, and describing the end. And when you can do that, you'll have a full story. If you're still feeling kind of iffy and having trouble describing the middle or the end or the beginning, then keep working on it because you're going to need all three. <laughs> Some questions that you could ask yourself to figure out the beginning, middle, or end could be what happens to make this a story? What is life like in the beginning before the change? And then what is the conflict in the world or in the character that makes things begin to change and go in a new direction? What does your character do or not do about it? What happens because of their actions or their inaction? What are the end results that kind of wrap up the conflict and resolve things? Unless you have a counting book or something, you need this. A couple other tips on story that I read that I thought were really good is that if your character talks to themselves a lot, um, like does a lot of wondering out loud, then consider giving them a friend or even an imaginary friend to talk to, but somebody to kind of dialogue with. Another good rule of thumb that applies to all stories, but I think it definitely applies to children's books, is if you are bored, then they will be too. And number seven is your writing. So once you've got your story kind of figured out and you've written a few drafts of it, you figured out the tense and the person, now it's time to really hone the writing and make the writing really good. So a couple tips on the writing. I would say if a sentence doesn't contribute to the plot or the character, um, to the arc and the overall story, then delete it. If you have a page or more of just dialogue, 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 or lots of adjectives or adverbs or long describing sentences, delete that too. Basically, be really strict with what you allow on the page because children's books are short. You need to make the most of your page space. And so if you can find one word that will replace two or more, then do it. If you find yourself using a lot of punctuation like exclamation points or capital letters or italics or bold, the chances are that you actually could write it better. You could find better words that really make your point without needing to do all those extra things. In my day-to-day -day life, I love exclamation points, but when it comes to a book and a story, choose your words really carefully so you don't need as many of those. Also, extremes rule. This is something that I didn't really think about because I don't have kids yet, but for kids, the world is pretty black and white. It's pretty extreme. So especially kids ages 10 and under, they'll take things very literally. So keep that in mind. My last tip specific to writing is try reading it out loud. It's a short story. You've got time. If you read it out loud, you're going to hear those weird, awkward parts, and it's going to help you to kind of edit it until it works better. That's everything related to coming up with a story idea for a children's book and then actually writing it. Don't get overwhelmed. Take it in bits and pieces like any good story. It will take time. That's a good story if it takes you a while to write it and revise it and come up with the perfect story. Just because it's shorter doesn't mean that you shouldn't rewrite. Always, always, always edit it.
your work, no matter what it is. <laughs> okay, guys, that's everything. Don't forget to participate in my giveaway below. Remember, how to participate is step one. Share a picture of Penny's book on social media. You can take pictures from my personal accounts, like on Instagram. Step two, tell all your friends how excited you are about this book that's coming out. And step three, send me a picture of your post so that I know to enter your name in the giveaway. That's it. All the links are below. Here is a little sneak peek of what's going to be in, ah, the grand prize package. This is a little balloon with a corgi on it, so when you blow it up, it's going to have a big corgi on it. And this is going to not only be in the grand prize package, but these are going to go out to everybody who buys a signed copy during release week. Something a little extra for you guys. Something fun. Okay, that's everything. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Bye!